squat all the way down. Take your elbows and shove your knees out. Now, get in your mind the idea that this segment right here is not vertical, okay? You're supposed, you need to be about right here. Because the whole idea of the squat is this, okay? Shove up against my hand, drive up. That's the squat, okay? Do that again. But here we are, bend over. Now, push me up. That's how you squat. You squat with this, not with this. Not with the knees, not with the feet against the floor. Don't lift the chest. Don't push the floor away. Don't think about straightening out your knees. Think about this right here. Shove your ass up out of the hole again. Drive up hard. All right, now here's a little trick that makes that work better. Look at the floor right there. Okay. Again, squat down. See, the, put your eyeballs right on the floor. Notice that what that did with your neck is kind of normalize your spinal position, even across the cervical. Now look at the floor and drive up. Good. Do that again. Push hard, hard up out of the hole. See how that works? Mm -hmm. Now, let me, just in contrast, let me show you. Where have you been looking when you squat? Uh, probably, no. probably nowhere in particular. Yeah. Okay, again. Look over there. Now squat up. Which works best? You're looking, down. looking down actually works best. Your chest is going to go where your eyes go. So if you look up, your chest comes up. If your chest comes up, what do your hips do? They go forward. If your hips go forward, what do your knees do? Go they go forward too. And if your knees go forward, what happens to your knee angle? Closes, right? And what happens to your hamstrings? They slack distally. They slack from the knee end of the hamstrings. And what are you trying to do with your hips? You're trying to maintain a back angle with your hamstrings. And the back angle is what allows you to drive your ass up out of the bottom. Anytime you lift this up, you kill this drive, okay? So looking at the floor, maintaining a more horizontal back angle allows you to drive your hips up out of the floor with a lot more power. And you find examples of this in powerlifting. If you look in the powerlifting meets where they actually judge depth, then what you'll see is that there's two basic ways to, to try to squat. And the, the one that is the most productive is when we're staying here and staying in the hips, in the hips. Okay. Right there, okay, feel that bone? Mm -hmm. It goes right under that, it's the spine of the scapula. This is real critical. Okay. And so what you've got to do is get, get used to the idea that the, that the top position, the rack position of the bar in the squat is not comfortable. It's tight. It's not supposed to be painful, but it's not supposed to be comfortable. It's supposed to be tight. Elbows up, chest up. See, when you do both of those things, you tighten the whole back. So chest up higher than that. Chest up higher than that. Good. Toes out more than you want. Good. That's the stance. Okay. Now, the first thing you're going to do when you go down is you're going to bend at the hip. You're gonna shove your ass back, and that means this happens to your back angle. At the same exact time, knees go forward and out so that they stay parallel to the toes. Pull to the foot here. Squat, drive your butt up first. That one was the first one you did correctly. You feel the difference on that? Stand all the way up. Again, knees and hips at the same time. Shove your ass up. There you go. See, you don't worry about this. You'll stand up without having to micromanage your chest. Don't think about your chest. Think about this. Go. That looked pretty good. You kind of feel how, it, how it's working now? Make sure the depth is critical. You don't get the bounce into the rebound if you don't get your... Now, that time, you did the worst thing in the whole world. You feel your hips move forward? Don't do that. Okay. Stay here. Drive them up. Hips move up. That's how you squat. Now, rebound. Rebound. Don't pause down there. The bounce is critical. That's the movement. But that time the hips went forward again. No, that time the hips went forward again. That's that Louis Simmons shit. Now. 
yeah, don't do that. Just that looks pretty good. At no point does anything come forward. Okay. All right. The bar is here, Brett. Drive it up. Drive it up. Exaggerate. That. See the difference between the previous rep and that one? That thing right there. Shove it up out of the hole. That's the squat. Exactly. Do it again. Perfect. Perfect. Good. Rack it. Nothing goes forward. Everything goes straight up from the hips. All right, that's a good stance. Big breath. Big breath. A little bit more here. That's it. See the difference? It's subtle, but it's important. Balance on this lap. That was the best one you've done today. Do one more, just like that. Good, exactly like that. Rack it. Good. Toes out, there's your stance. Big breath, every rip. Good. Good, nice little rebound out of the hole. You're right below parallel. Good. That's exactly right, good. You rebound off of the tight stuff at the bottom and then catch that rebound and drive your hips. Tiny bit wider at the heels. There it is, right there. Good, big air, eyeballs. Perfect, again. Good, rack it. That's exactly right, those were good, those okay. were good. Biggest myth about squats, biggest problem with squats, the biggest form error most people make with squats is back angle. Back angle in the squat is supposed to be more horizontal because we're using the back as part of the leverage system when we squat. And if you try to maintain too upright a back angle, you can't lift as much weight. Now. The problem with that is that the conventional wisdom people, the ones that derive their strength and conditioning credentials from physical therapy, think that, and they've all agreed to agree with each other on this, that a more vertical back angle prevents something that is called shear, okay? Shear is supposed to be a fatal condition that, that paralyzes people when they apply it to their back, all right? Uh, you, in other words, they think that the back needs to be as vertical as possible when you squat to prevent the application of shear to the back. Well, that's a problem because we are using the back as part of the leverage system and in order for the back to do its share of the job, it must be at a more horizontal angle so that you can apply the force to the big muscles of the hips so that we can strengthen them. And guess what else happens? The back gets stronger too. It's just like everything else. It gets stronger if you stress it. And you stress it and you make the weight go up a little bit and suddenly you can squat 800 pounds with your back at the correct angle to lift 800 pounds. And amazingly enough, nobody's back gets hurt. So everybody needs to just get over the idea that here, and this is the most common problem we see. People that have read the book three or four times come to the seminar and they're trying to squat here and we have to move them into position like I had to move you because the idea is here. Point your nipples at the floor, okay? See if that cue penetrates okay. because we want the back here, okay? Let's see what happens. Good, both feet together, it's like a squat out of the rack, good. <clears throat> Toes out, good, big giant breath. Good hips, point your nipples at the floor. All right, remember your wrists this time, they need to be tighter. All of this supports the bar, chest up. That's your stance. Now, big, big breath. That's high. Bury it. There it is. Call that number one. Drive hips. Drive hips, Brett. Stop, stop. Big breath. Four. Don't exhale on the way up. Big breath. Drive your ass. Stay in your ass. That's it. Good. 
When it gets heavy, when it gets heavy, that moves the bar. Okay. Shove your ass up in the air. You dig into that. That's where the, that's where strength is. All right. Okay. A heavy deadlift is always pulled like that, no matter what you try to do. Shoulders behind the bar. That's not what happens.